What's up guys, Ryan from Manscapes here. So today's video is the top tips for my giant African millipedes. Again, just before I start any of these tips, these are actually things that have worked for me. These are things that people have um, sort of said to me or some re uh, research I've done myself. So remember, everything is subjective. You know, certain things are. But um, what I will be doing, just breaking down, um, you know, weekly feeds. What I'll be feeding them weekly. Um, you know, what soil I used, um, plants, and then lighting as well. Um, but regardless, we'll get straight on with the video. As always from me, peace and love, I'm out. But the first thing that I want to mention is the soil. Now, um, I, I don't know if you have seen, but I will tag somewhere on the top here so you can see, um, you know, how I actually built the setup itself. But the main thing I did is I collected loads, and I mean absolutely loads of dead wood, leaf litter, organic matter, you know, white wood, shredded white wood, things like that that they eat because that is the main bulk of their diet. Um, and then in terms of weekly feeds, um, what I do is I actually give them things like apples, you know, bananas, cucumber, a variety of fruit and veg, um, and I sprinkle it essentially with calcium dust. Um, and that, that's literally all, all I do. I mist it down every day or two. Um, I feed them little jelly pots. You'll know which ones I mean. The little pots of jelly you can buy for you know your ants or beetles. It's actually beetle jelly, um, but I buy that jelly as well. It's more of a treat, but what I do afterwards is I leave, I left one of them in there and I fill it with water and change that water every day or two as well. So they always have a constant water source if they do need to go and drink something. But generally when you mist it down, that's when they get most of the water anyway. They prefer it. They don't really drink from bodies of water, I've noticed. But regardless, I left it in there just in case they needed it. Um, so again, you know, in terms of actual soil levels, just make sure there's loads of leaf litter, shredded wood, rotten wood, organic matter. Just make sure there's absolutely loads in there because they will just destroy that, eat it all. And uh, when you are making the tank, make sure you collect enough of that to make it deep because they do like to bury themselves, obviously, in the soil when they're shredding, molting, things like that. So just make sure you do that. What I want to do though is just show you inside my feeder tub because I use a lot of this for the mealworms to obviously keep reproducing a lot of this shredded wood, leaf litter and um, any plants that I trim inside my setups I will tend to group them up and drop them in but what we'll do is I'll open the lid and I'll just take a few pieces out and show you exactly what's in there, what they eat, what the nest in the mealworms but obviously there's isopods in there um, as well which they're breeding. The reason they're in there is actually because I got them from outside, all of the shredded wood and I had it in the tub. Um, I haven't had to buy any uh, mealworms or feeders since I made this tub, which helps save money as well. So here is the tub, as you can see. Um, all my plant trimmings go in here and essentially, you know, the rotten wood, things like this. Now there will be teething with springtails because they essentially eat the same things as well as, you know, poop, organic matter things like that. Now if I turn it over, what you will notice is in this section, see how that's had a huge hole dug out of it? it all that means is that mealworms have dug the way into that, ate the way into there, um, and then uh, became, you know, beetles. But you can see how easy, you know, or how soft it is. If I literally just sort of touch it there and squeeze it a little bit, um, it, it's really soft. You know, you can put these through straight away. Um, it's so soft, but that, that's what I mean by this type of rotten wood. It breaks up. It's great, they absolutely love anything like this. You know, even branches, they'll still use all of this stuff. And in fact, if you hold that up to the side, you can see the detail in terms of how they've eaten it and through. Um, things like cardboard as well, I put in here from when I have the tubs, but they, they eat all of it. All of the soil in here, um, you know, alongside the, um, alongside the other, you know, compost. I tend to use compost because it's better the stuff with sort of like little pieces of leaves, debris and things like this here, little org pieces of organic matter. These are just cuttings from plants and I drop all of them in um, again at the same time. You know, this will actually help you if you're wanting to uh, have a tub like this of your own and keep producing them. But um, you know, it, it's going absolutely great. For example, here, we can just pick one out there. You can see, oh, no, we won't. But there is loads in here. Uh, absolutely loads of springtails, loads of mealworms. If you ever want any um, springtails, I can literally just get a spoon, take a couple bits, pieces of this soil out, and you know, if I pick it up, you'll see it's sort of teething with bioactivity 
springtails, little mites. There's even millipedes in here, just native to the UK, which um, as you can see, there's, there's all sorts of little bugs in here. So yeah, I mean, this is generally what you would use this type of soil for millipedes, swimming where they can reproduce in. Um, like I say, I use this as a hiding place. I added this in at first, but regardless, um, all of this here, as long as you're replacing that organic matter, which is for me, it's just adding all of these different trimmings and bits of planting. But the main thing, or the thing that they eat most, are these. And as you can, you can see there, they've, that was obviously one piece of it. All of the middle out there, nested inside, tunneled through, and then dug the way back out and kept eating it. So I will need to replace some of that rotten wood soon because it is running low. But regardless, at the same time, I've got all of this leaf litter, all this organic matter, uh, things like that. And then, you know, if I pick up, for example, a piece of wood, here we go. You'll see they're actually inside there. And that's where they go into, turn into beetles. Um, you know, so regardless, this is what millipedes will love, love to eat. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, they're not the prettiest tubs, but if you ever want to use a feeder tub like this of your own, that's what you need to do. Just go into the forest, steal loads of wood like this, um, and then throw it all into a tub with some compost and, you know, just watch everything reproduce. What I would do though is add isopods and springtails in, uh, still because, as you can see, the mess around here. If I didn't have those, all of this would have just turned to mold. This would have all molded over and, you know, wouldn't actually kind of be exactly how it is to this day. But, um, you know, adding all of those springtails in, you can physically just see how many there actually is, though. If you just, if I just sort of pan across here, and there's obviously a lot more deeper within the soil because generally these will be deeper in the soil levels, but they're even on, you know, on the surface in numbers like this. Um, and I, I honestly find it absolutely crazy how well they've done. Um, but to me, you know, that kind of makes sense. They're exactly where they need to be, or they would be in a natural environment and um, you know they're, they're digging their way through these rotten pieces of wood. Also the other thing over um, calcium dust or spring, uh, sorry, sprinkling dust, uh, calcium dust on the food is you can just get some of this bone here. Um, store called Micro Exotics, I actually got it from, but you can um, get it from most exotic um, dealers or retailers that will, um, you know, have this fish bone, you know, ready um, that you can buy. It's literally like one pound, something like that, two pounds, and um, it does absolutely perfect. So just make sure you get something like that as well as an extra calcium source. But, you know, this is just how it is. You can see, look at that. This is how much they love it. All of those springtails. Look at that. It's nuts. But this is the type of things I mean. Just little pieces of wood like that from the forest that you know they can graze on, um, you know, and they will produce. But I wanted to show you in here because this is kind of living proof Whereas just telling you about it isn't really showing you exactly what I've done or how to do it. But this is, um, you know, this is essentially what it is. Oh, and if you're wondering about the smell, I bet you'll be thinking a tub like that will stink. No, it doesn't. It actually doesn't. Um, it's, it just literally just smells of forest floor. And if I look in here now, you've actually got a tiny baby little millipede in here. Now that tiny, tiny little millipede is obviously just a native UK millipede. Um, I'm glad to know that they are reproducing little babies or little, um, you know, baby millipedes in here. I've never really took these out and introduced them into my other setups, but I do think they're adorable and, um, you know, I'll be keeping them in here and eventually, or I hope that, you know, I will have a huge booming population on those and my isopods. There's actually centipedes in here as well, um, soil centipedes. So hopefully they all, you know, come on, come along really nicely and, um, they do well. Some of these plants in here do start to flower, uh, sorry, flower to uh, root, reproduce and trail along and um, they do start to survive, but you know, you're not talking very long because I do use this tub quite often. I'm always moving things around and then eventually they will die off, but a lot of them will survive for as long as they can until they get to the point where I may damage a node or a main core. But just keep all of these in and uh, you can see physically, like it's actually bonkers how many are in here. The 
the other critters will enjoy the apples and things like that you put in too. And the uh, sort of final side note is with these being arboreal, remember you've got something that they can climb onto as they like to do so, and they do tend to hang out on the highest part of the tank. Um, but remember, they are escape artists, as you can see here. I remember I was doing a little water change in this, I was cleaning the glass on the millipede setup. And if you look here, I literally left it open this much just because I was chopping some apples or going to get some new apples, new potato, things like that to put in. And it actually got out. So, and that was a case of, you know, literally a couple of minutes for me chopping the fruit up for them. So just make sure you've got really good escape prevention on your lid and um, so they can't constantly escape. Got some other little baby millipedes in here. I'm not too sure if these are baby giant African millipedes, but I did have some native UK millipedes in here when I actually obviously put all the other stuff from outside, as all this sort, all the soil, all the um, other things was all sourced from outside. And remember if you like the video to smash that like button for me, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you get all my notifications. But as always from me, peace and love, I'm out.